Now, we can't understand Islam without uh, knowing something about, about Muhammad. And um, he was actually an orphan boy. He was born in 570 AD. He was born in 570 AD in Mecca. Uh, his father died before he was born. And um, his mother died when he was eight years old. So he was an orphan boy. His grandfather then cared for him, but his grandfather then died as well. And um, so he was then raised by his uncle. And his uncle was in charge of the um, pantheon of gods worshipped in Mecca. In Mecca, there was a temple to the gods. And this temple was called the uh, Kaaba. And uh, so Muhammad grew up surrounded by all of these idols. And he absolutely hated them. He did not like these idols at all. Um, and um, he became a merchant. And he was very uh, chagrined as well with the unjust practices of many of the er merchant class. And so he grew up with a spirit of uh, anger or opposition to these many false gods, 360 of them were present within the Kaaba and also very concerned about issues of justice and righteousness and how to bring all of that about righteousness and justice in the Meccan society was quite a challenge for him. And then one night he would go, he was a merchant, but occasionally he would go out into the wilderness, the caves outside of Mecca, and he would meditate under those, in, in the caves outside of Mecca there. And um, one day, while he is, one night while he is meditating, he um, said that a white being appeared to him. And this white being said uh, to him, recite, recite in the name of him who teaches man what he does not know, who teaches man the use of a pen, who created man out of clay. That was the first word of revelation. He was terrified, and he went to his um, uh, wife and told her what had happened. And she said that she believed that that white being that appeared to him and taught him this, this statement to recite was probably an angel who had come to him and that he may well be a prophet. And so he struggled with that for a while but became convinced that he was indeed a prophet and that this white being who appeared to him was probably the angel Gabriel. Muslims say that that night of revelation was the best night of a thousand months and that if this revelation had come down all at one time and would have struck a mountain when it came down at one time, it would have smashed the mountain flat. For this revelation is that powerful. But in the providence of God, Muslims say, God chose not to send the revelation down all at one time, but rather sent it down in little pieces at a time. And Muhammad would memorize it, teach it to his disciples, they in turn would write it down or memorize it. And uh, over a 32 year period of time, uh, bit by bit, the total Quran was revealed. But it began there in the mountains outside of Mecca, um, in, in the caves, and um, uh, with, with, angel, with the angel Gabriel coming to, to, to teach him these words of revelation. That's the Muslim understanding. And um, so Muhammad, is there in Mecca and he's receiving these revelations and um, he preaches against polytheism and against the evils of the society and he's preaching and call, calling people to repent, to believe in God, but he's not being successful. 
very little success. Only a few people were believing in his message. And so it was a very, very discouraging situation. He wanted to build this house of Islam. He wanted to construct it, but he's unable to do so uh, because he has no power to effectuate, uh, to establish, to implement these revelations that are coming to him. And so in that discouragement, in that situation, why uh, one day uh, messengers came to him from Medina. Medina was 250 miles north of Mecca. It'd be about 400 kilometers north of Mecca. These messengers came and they said to Muhammad, we want you to come to Medina and you will become the general in our army and you will become our political leader as well as our prophet. Remember, a bit ago we talked about Jesus receiving a similar invitation in Galilee to become the general in the army and the political leader of the uh, Galileans. It's a grand plan they had. And remember, Jesus rejected that invitation. This is the same invitation that Muhammad received here in, um, in Medina. He's in Mecca, but the invitation comes from Medina. And with considerable gratitude, he and his followers accepted that invitation, feeling this was the hand of God upon them, helping them to escape the suffering of Mecca and to acquire the political and military power that they needed to establish the House of Islam. And so they accepted the invitation and they migrated. They migrated from Mecca to Medina. It took them about three months to do the migration. Um, they went six, uh, three weeks to do the migration. It took them about three weeks to do the migration. They uh, did it secretly. They would travel only at night. And uh, then during the daytime, they would hide in the desert caves. And finally, when they arrived in Medina, they were enthusiastically welcomed. And so now Muhammad is not just a prophet. He is also a political leader and a military officer. And so with those mechanisms of political and military power, he was now able to effectuate the House of Islam, which he believed God wanted him to bring about. Um, this migration is called the Hijrah. The Hijrah, which means the migration. It's very, very interesting to me that the Muslim era begins with Hijrah. It does not begin in 610 when Muhammad claimed that the angel Gabriel came to him for the first time with a book of Revelation. Not then. It doesn't begin in 570 when Muhammad is born, that's when Christians begin their era, the birth of Jesus. But rather, the Muslim era begins with the Hijrah in 622. And I frequently ask my Muslim friends, why is that so important? Why would you begin your era with the Hijrah? And they say to me, David, don't you understand? This is the most significant event in the history of the world. For never before did a prophet of God acquire political and military power and spiritual power and was able to use that power so effectively that he put in place a political military system in which God's will is established on earth and a system that potentially can reach out to encompass the enti entire world. This is the first time that ever happened. Moses tried, they tell me, but Moses only succeeded in putting in place a system for, uh, for the Jews. And Jesus did not even try, but Muhammad brought it about. And so the Hijrah becomes an extremely important uh, theological understanding of the manner in which God works to bring about his kingdom on earth. Muhammad now is able with political and military power to bring it about. And he used that power very, very effectively. 
uh, wars began, as you might imagine, between Medina and Mecca. These wars went on for eight years, quite a number of battles. On the whole, the Muslims were victorious. There was one battle in which they were defeated, rather badly defeated, but the Quran explains this defeat as being because the Muslims were not obeying the Prophet as they should really obey him. That if we really obey the Prophet carefully, God in his mercy and grace will give us victory over our enemies who are attempting to do us wrong. God, God, will, God will favor the underdog and give them victory. Uh, that's, that's the understanding. Um, and also there in, uh, in, in Medina, Muhammad was able to organize uh, a constitution, a political system, which could incorporate into the system other groups of people that are not Muslim, like the Christians or even the Jews, although the relationship with the Jews went very bad, uh, tragically bad. Uh, but uh, that was not the intention of the Muslims for it to go bad. They wanted to put in place a system which would incorporate minority groups in a happy sort of way, providing they respected the authority of the Muslims uh, and, and, and walked in their, in their council. And so it was, near, it was in Mecca now, in Medina now, that Muhammad was finally able to establish the house of God, the Dar al-Islam the region under Muslim political control. It finally happens there in, uh, in, uh, in Medina. <clears throat> Very significant. Now, the wars are going on. And slowly, slowly, the Muslims are winning the wars. And so, the... Uh, the uh, the Meccans finally sent a, an emissary to Muhammad. And the emissary said, Muhammad, please come to Mecca. We're ready to make peace with you. We want to call off these wars between us and you Muslims. Let's make peace. And so Muhammad and his uh, followers accepted that invitation. And they signed a peace treaty. And so Muhammad now went south, 400 kilometers, into Mecca. He had, he had 10,000 soldiers with him, many of them on horses. As yet, it's the time of peace. They've made a peace treaty already. The Meccans have been defeated. As he moves into Mecca, he forgives all of those who have done these awful things to him, forgives them most generously. And he goes into the Kaaba, that temple in the center of Mecca, where these 360 gods are, and with his thousand soldiers, Muhammad goes and smashes all these divinities to pieces. So they're absolutely obliterated. Um, and only the black stone is remaining. Within that Kaaba was a black stone that they said came from heaven. Um, and, and, they, and the Muslims viewed this as a sign of God's revelation, like the Koran that came from heaven to us, a sent down revelation. And so this black stone is a uh, sign of that revelation that God sent down. So the black stone was, was, was permitted to remain, but all the other symbols of worship um, and religion were destructed absolutely. All these 360 gods were destroyed. And Muhammad proclaimed that only the worship of the one true God, Allah, will be tolerated anymore in Mecca. All other divinities are to be smashed and to be obliterated. And so the Dar al-Islam now has extended to include Medina first, but now it also includes it also includes Mecca. So this whole region now becomes Dar al-Islam. And by the time of his death, the region under Muslim political control in Arabia had extended to include all of Arabia, and already beginning to make some incursions, uh, some uh, uh, overtures or incursions into surrounding countries such as Syria as well. After his death, within 100 years, the movement had spread from the Indus River in India all the way over into Spain and all across North Africa. One half of the Christian world came under Muslim political rule within one century. It was a phenomenal growth. It doesn't mean that these Christians all became Muslims. Absolutely not. 
for many centuries, the majority of the people in all of these Muslim ruled countries was Christian. Um, but slowly, slowly in many of these countries, the Christians did leave Islam, oftentimes because of uh, political pressure, uh, often because of, um, of um, special taxes they had to pay, things like that, you know. Uh, and some would, would uh, slowly, slowly move into the Muslim circle. But it was, it was a gradual process. It did not happen very quickly. Uh, but the political expansion was a phenomenon that happened very, very rapidly. Um, and so, wherever the Muslims went, they were able now to establish the Dar al-Islam, the Muslim, the Islamic uh, house of God. And so While we continue being a benevolent project, your kind donations will continue to be vital in fulfilling the calling of TVS ministry. We do count on your gracious support and cooperation. For detailed information, please visit tvsseminary.com.